Welcome back to AP Chemistry. In our video today, we're going to be looking at reactions of strong bases and weak acids. Now, this is a continuation from our lesson from uh, the previous video where we learned about strong acids and strong bases. Now, this particular type of reaction is going to require a much better knowledge of equilibrium, and so we'll get to that here shortly. But first of all, let's imagine that we have a reaction like this, where a solution of sodium hydroxide is being added dropwise to a beaker of acetic acid. Well, first of all, you want to write the net ionic equation for this reaction. Whenever you're doing that, you always want to represent the strong base as hydroxide. And anything else that that hydroxide is attached to, like uh, sodium in this case, is going to be a spectator ion. And you're going to add that to the weak acid, and you'll write out that formula using its full formula. So acetic acid, as we know, is going to be uh, HC2H3O2, and then we'll add hydroxide to that in its ion form. Now, in writing the products, you want to, re to remember that since hydroxide is a base, one of the products is going to be the conjugate acid of that base, which is water. And then uh, acetic acid, of course, is an acid, and so the other product of that is going to be the conjugate base, which is the acetate ion, like that. And like I said, all other ions are spectator ions. So that means that the sodium ion, in this case, would be a spectator ion. Well, let's work a more complex problem here using this example here. And we're going to take a case where a student adds 50.0 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar sodium hydroxide solution to 75.0 milliliters of 0 0.150 molar acetic acid. We're going to give the net ionic equation, which we actually already just wrote that. We're going to talk about the spectator ions, and hopefully you realize that sodium is still the spectator ion. Now let's calculate the pH of the resulting mixture. Now, the best way to do this is, first of all, we have to calculate the moles. You might remember from the last lesson that any time there's a strong acid or a strong base reacting with something, we want to think about this in terms of moles. And so you want to calculate the moles of... Uh, of H plus and actually acetic acid, uh, that should say acetic acid instead of hydroxide, using a mole ice box. So we're going to set up the ice box here. And to find the moles of hydroxide, we're going to take uh, 0.100 molar times 0 0.05 liters. And so when we do that, we find that the answer is 0 0.00. 500 zero, zero moles. So that's how many moles of hydroxide we have. Now, to find the moles of acetic acid, we want to do something similar. We take the 0 0.150 molar and multiply it by 0 0.075 liters. And so that's what uh, the work is shown down here for that. When you multiply that on your calculator, I believe you get an answer of about 0 0.01125 moles. Now, we're not starting with any acetate ion, so I'll put a zero there. And of course, like we learned in the last lesson, we're not really caring about how much water we're making, so we're just going to ignore that part of this. Now, looking at the reactants, hopefully we can see that there's less hydroxide than acetic acid. So that means that hydroxide is going to be our limiting reactant in this problem. So I can subtract the 0 0.005 moles from both sides there on the left side, which means we're going to add 0 0.005 moles on the product side. So when we look at the ending line here, uh, we have 0 0.00625 moles of acetic acid and 0 0.005 moles of acetate ion. Now hopefully, if you look at the problem here, you can see that the that the hydroxide, the base, is gone, and we have leftover acid. And since there's excess acid, that means that the solution overall is going to be acidic. Now, let's calculate how acidic. We have to find the molarity of these two uh, objects, or these two species that we have left in the, 
in the reaction. So we'll start with the acetic acid. And so the, the molarity of the acetic acid, and let me go to a new slide since we're about out of room here. The molarity of the acetic acid is going to be the 0 0.00625 moles that we got divided by the total volume. So, you know, 50 milliliters here of the base plus 75 milliliters of the acid. We're going to assume there's no change there, so it's 125 milliliters. So that's why we're dividing by 0.125 liters here. And if my calculations are correct, that's about 0 0.0500 molar of acetic acid. We're going to do the same thing with the acetate. We uh, got from the problem earlier that it's 0 0.00500 moles of the, uh, that should say acetate ion, rather. And we're going to divide that by the, the same volume, 0.125 liters. And the answer that we get is about 0 0.0400 molar. Now, we have these two values here. It's a, a weak acid and there's some of its conjugate base, what we can do is we can actually plug those two values into an ice box for the dissociation of acetic acid. This is uh, just like we learned in the last lesson about how to find the pH of a weak acid. So we're going to write this out as the dissociation of a weak acid, acetic acid. And we're going to set it up as an ice box. And we're going to put some numbers in here. The initial concentration of acetic acid is that 0 0.05 molar. And then the H plus or the H3O plus, we really don't have any of that to speak of. And we have 0 0.04 molar acetate to start out with. So we're going to put that into the initial row. Now, we know that the product side has to go up because you can't go less than zero. So this is going to be a minus X and the right side will be plus x and plus x. So for our equilibrium values, we're going to have 0 0.05 minus x, x, and 0 0.04 plus x. Now, just like we learned in the weak acid uh, lesson previously, we're going to take all of these values and, and plug them into the Ka expression for this acid. And so we know that it's going to look like this. And so we just plug those values in. Uh, we can look up that the Ka for acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. That's a number that's readily available. And in a homework problem, that would most likely be given to you. Now, we notice that, that this algebra problem is a little bit uh, tricky because if we were to do uh, the distributive property here and, and solve for this, we'd have a quadratic equation, and, and we try to avoid those. So I'm going to take the plus x right here and the minus x right there and obliterate those. I'm going to ignore them, assuming that those are pretty small compared to the numbers that they're being added or subtracted from. So when we do that, we can cross multiply, and I'm getting a value that x equals 2.25 times 10 to the negative fifth. And the significance of x up here is that that is the H plus concentration. So we know that if we take the negative log of that value, we can get the pH pretty easily. So we can take the negative log and find that the pH of this mixture is 4.65. So this is a fairly lengthy problem. It takes us quite a bit of time just to get to that pH. But uh, if you think this is a little bit long, that's OK. I'm going to show you a shortcut for this uh, in a future video here. In, in the next video, in fact. So uh, stay tuned, and you'll see what that shortcut is. But let's do another example here, and this one's a little bit different. In this case, we're going to have a student that adds 100 milliliters of 0 0.150 molar calcium hydroxide to 140 milliliters of 0 0.20 molar hydrofluoric acid. So we're going to give the net ionic equation. Well, once again, we want to remember that every strong base is represented as hydroxide ions. We're not going to worry about the, the calcium ion there. That's a spectator. And we're going to add that to HF. So here is the net ionic equation. Of course, the products are the conjugate base, fluoride, and water, which is the conjugate acid of hydroxide. Now, part B calculate the hydroxide concentration after the reaction, well, we're going to have to set this up as an ice box in terms of moles, just like we did in the last example. So 
We're going to set that ice box up here, but we have to figure out the moles. So we'll start with the hydroxide. And if we look at the moles of hydroxide, that's going to be 0.1 liters times 0 0.150 molar. But notice that we have two hydroxides here. It's a two to one ratio. So we actually have to take that value and multiply it by two. So it's 0 0.150 liters times 0 0.1 molar times two. When you get that, it's 0 0.03 moles of hydroxide that go in, in, the, in that part of the ice box there. Now for hydrofluoric acid, we have 0 0.200 molar times 0 0.14 liters. And so when we multiply that out, it looks like that's going to be about 0 0.0280 moles of hydrofluoric acid. Doesn't look like we're starting with any fluoride ion, so we're going to put a zero there. And of course, we don't care about the water that's present for this purpose anyway. So if we look at the initial mole values, hopefully we can see that there's less hydrofluoric acid. So that is the limiting reactant. So we're going to subtract 0 0.0280 from both side, or from the left side rather, from both values, and the fluoride is going to go up by 0 0.028 moles. That means that our HF is completely gone, and we have 0 0.002 moles of hydroxide and 0 0.0280 moles of fluoride. Now, we have a little different situation than we had in the last problem, because you might remember that in the last problem we had a weak acid, we had some acetic acid left over, so we could work this as a weak acid problem. But we don't have any acid here. In fact, what we have is the strong base that's left over. Now, when you have a strong base and a weak base, we're actually going to say that the strong base is the one that's going to predominate. We're not really going to worry about the weak base because it's, well, it's weak. And of course, since there's more hydroxide than there was of acid, this is going to be a basic solution. So we're going to work this as a basic problem, a strong base problem. So what we have to do now is find the molarity of that hydroxide. So we have 0 0.0020 moles of hydroxide. And to find the molarity of that, we have to divide it by the total volume. And so we had 100 mils up here plus 140 mils there. So that's 240 milliliters total. So we're going to have to divide that 0 0.002 moles by 0 0.240 liters. And when we do that, we get an answer of about 0 0.0083 molar hydroxide. Now, if we know the molarity of hydroxide, then it's pretty easy to get pOH and then pH. We just have to take negative log of this. And so negative log of hydroxide, uh, key that in, into your calculator, it's about 2.08. So from pOH, going to pH is a very simple process. Just subtract from 14 and we get that the pH is 11.92. And that makes sense because we had lots of hydroxide left over. We would expect this to be a very basic uh, solution, and that, that's a fairly basic pH. Well, at this point, you should be able to work any of these problems where you have a strong base being added to a weak acid. Now, uh, like I said in a future video, or in the next video that I post, I'll actually be showing you some, uh, a shortcut for how to uh, do some of these problems a little bit more easily. Well, I hope you learned some chemistry here in this video. If you did, then please give me a thumbs up, and I hope you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. I hope to see you again on my uh, YouTube channel here, or visit me at krugslist.org, where we can learn some more chemistry together.